Welcome everyone and thank you Kirsi for this nice introduction. Uh, so actually let me first say that I'm really uh, honored and grateful to be here so thank you for the invitation. So as she said we came across each other, we met each other um, in the innovation challenge that was part of uh, the Enter conference like two years ago and we made to the finals. And I wasn't able to attend yesterday's sessions because I was late but uh, According to what I heard today, uh, really brilliant speakers and topics, and all topics were really insightful. So let me briefly introduce myself once again. Actually, my name is Tadeo Gelia. I'm coming from Slovenia, from western part of Slovenia. Um, I'm a PhD student and teaching assistant at the Faculty for Tourism, which is University of Primorska. And my professional, personal and research interests mostly evolve around rural areas and, and its empowerment. And when I will, I will be talking about rural areas in my presentation, I always refer to its stakeholders and I often call them hidden gem, gems. We have, we have heard about them today multiple times and we really believe that we can create amazing and very meaningful experience out of each passion and activities they are doing in their everyday life. And this is also the reason why we came up with the idea of introducing like um, experience platform, etc. What I have found out in recent days uh, when I was doing research about Montenegro is actually that these are two very, very comparable countries. If, we, if I compare Slovenia to Montenegro, when it comes to how young they are, okay, initially, when it comes to the size, these are both very compact country with very scattered kind of land with a lot of rural spaces, with a lot of potential in these rural spaces. And with these short distances, you can really reach mountains, climb mountains and really swim in the sea in a matter of a few hours. Um, only you have a little longer coastline compared to us. We have only 42 kilometers of it. So, let me once again on the next slide, slide show you why Slovenia has and provides such a huge potential. By the way, as you probably know, as you've probably heard, Slovenia has focused, focused heavily on its green and sustainable character in the recent years. And among other prizes we won, the most prominent one is probably from 2016 when we were declared as the first green destination of the world. And after that we have been nominated and rewarded for many other things when it comes to sustainability and greenness. We have also introduced this green scheme, if you heard, but I will not go into details today. Um, so Slovenia is definitely a perfect ground for that. But by the way, when it comes to all these awards, it has positive and negative effects. And there are many negative effects, of course, of sustainability. Because we should not damage customer tri uh, trust by false claims that are happening every time in Slovenia. For example, everyone would like to turn his garden shed into a glamping resort without following any standards and etc. So there is a lot of cream washing into it, of course. So here, before moving into, into my presentation further, deeper, let, here are some interesting facts about Slovenia. Sorry, 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 sorry. So, uh, Slo great. Slovenian territory, so I mean, 32% of Slovenian territory is agricultural land. Almost 60% of Slovenian territory is covered by forest. There is 37% of Slovenian territory that lies within the protected Natura 2000. We have more than 2,000 kilometers of marked and well maintained hiking trails, more than 900 tourism farms. More than 400 local and regional food products. We have more than 30,000 wine producers and more than 200,000 beef families, which means that, let's say, every fifth Slovenian is actually a beekeeper. And uh, we produce, <laughs> we produce uh, 100 million liters of wine per year. Okay? So this is why there is a huge potential, I would say, for uh, rural development. And I would say that given that I was really involved in rural communities for years, and, I can, and I'm involved in tourism in general in my region, I can say that I really understand the dynamics, at least I can, I can 
talk about for Slovenia, uh, what challenges pervades these spaces? And just for a reference, only in, in last two years since the pandemic hit, we have organized more than 150 workshops of different types all across Slovenia with those micro rural stakeholders, okay, family run businesses and one man bands, I usually say. And we, we have identified like these challenges here. So the first is social exclusion, so lack of digital skills and business related experience. Um, this is the point where we are focusing the most with all our project and initiatives because we really believe in huge potential of technology in all areas. In, it's quite quickly and simple, it's quite quick and simple to implement. Uh, then there is economic exclusion, which means lack of sector specific support, lack of access to capital and knowledge assets type. With this I mean that I was, I was observing that many times uh, micro rural businesses are left out from different support schemes. And also, they are not, many times they are not eligible for calls for, for calls for grants, let's say, because they are not able to uh, meet these entry requirements, because all these standards and calls are written in the way that you need to have at least two employees. But as I said before, these micro rural providers are commonly one, I mean one event, uh, or they need to uh, have at least certain amount of revenues, so they are in that regard excluded. Then there is also political exclusion, like lack of representation in development policies. This is self-explanatory, they are not included sufficiently in decision-making processes and stuff. And there are others, more commonly known issues, like brain drain. In simple word, words, this means that younger generation are moving out of villages because they don't find them attractive to live, innovate and be creative. And villages are, by the way, also not very attractive, attractive for startups that would take villages to the next level. Then there is poor infrastructure, but this is again quite logical because of remoteness and stuff. But, but again, with all, all these smart mobility solutions we have nowadays, we should definitely find a way to better connect, let's say, rural areas with suburban and urban areas. And then, of course, there is a low production. Here, on the right-hand side, you can see um, the picture of my mother. Uh, she is having a guiding tour on her herbal farm. So I'm part, I'm personally coming from rural area, areas, and I'm part of the family-run business, so my mother is herbalist. And I always start my presentations with this picture because um, it clearly explains why I got and how I got interest in rural areas and I, why I would like to shape the ground there. Um, she is very professional at what she is doing. I mean, she is very determined, knowledgeable, uh, content-wise, but she is struggling a lot with, especially technology. Actually, she is struggling to break the line of visibility. So she's struggling with technology and there are also many administrative and legislative obstacles she's facing, etc. And that, <clears throat> I always say that luckily she had me, uh, the third son, because I was at home and I was helping her on every step of the way, every day. I was the one who set up a website for her. I'm the communication person with tourism agencies, with journalists, I'm designing leaflets for her, so I'm helping her everywhere. And now she is able to make up living out of this. And then I, I was start wondering, given that I pretty much know my region, how many other similar providers are yet there who would need similar kind of assistance, like operational, on the ground assistance. And something really clicked in my mind at that time, and then I called my colleagues that I was working before together, and we decided to launch a startup that I will explain on the next slide. And this startup is called Locals from Zero. I will not go deeper into the into details why from zero, uh, but this idea of the name was born when the pandemic hit. It doesn't mean that we will we are relaunching the tourism from from scratch. But it means that tourism will change out after the pandemic, and this is already shown actually. And what we did, we have launched a marketplace for local experience, but really for those local small, more pristine experience. 
On the first side, this marketplace looks pretty similar to all these well standing and established platforms like Airbnb experiences, Viator, etc. But there is one significant difference in our marketplace. We have introduced this additional layer called Scouts. And imagine Scouts are those similar to how I was for my mother, so like personal assistants. And this is the process that is happening in the background. So imagine, when the host registers on, the, on this platform, he has a chance, if he needs help, to choose from the pool of existing scouts, like local assistants from the close vicinity, from the neighborhood. And this scout is they take, taking care, the same as I for my mother, for his visibility. And he's actually managing here um, um, host listing, he's responding to inquiries, he is even taking pictures um, and managing availabilities and all this stuff. So he is personal assistant. And here on the right hand side you can see some pictures of this kind of experience. And we gained traction with this platform pretty quickly because we have we managed to onboard more than 30 hosts in a matter of two months, along with 50 very unique experiences. And then, uh, by the way, we have built the platform from scratch, from scratch because we haven't found an appropriate solution for our model out there. And then actually, three days after the launch, official launch, we by chance came across Fairbnb, the Italian cooperative actually. Uh, they are an alternative to short-term rentals platforms. And actually, after some two or three discussions with them and meetings, we quickly realized that we have very similar mission and vision. And that with the merger, we could be much, much stronger, actually. But let me first explain what this uh, fair be, be, what they are doing. Their main goal, as the name implies, actually, fair be, be, not Airbnb, they are trying to offset and mitigate all these negative effects caused by all these mainstream platforms on the cities like gentrification, noise, illegal listings and stuff. And uh, how they are actually doing that? They are donating, they are actually they are using half of the, uh, of the commission taken per each booking to donate to social ecological projects in the region in the close, closest possible neighborhood. And they have actually managed to onboard more than 1,000 hosts by... Uh, last, they have reached a milestone two months ago. They have awarded the 1,000 host. But let me explain... Let me give you an example of what social or ecologi ecological project actually is. With the merger, because we then decide for a merger, we have got, we, we have, um, we, we became a key partner from Slovenia actually. And we have just signed a contract with one organization in Slovenia. This is the first social project in Slovenia. And this is the organization for ex homeless people in Ljubljana. They are taking care of them, they are providing them all essential services and shelter, and they are trying to reintegrate them back into the communities. And what is the most fascinating about them, they are even organizing a tour, a city tour across Ljubljana, uh, where this acts, let's say drug or alcohol addict, take you, takes you around the corner and he is explaining his past very dark story. And this is very also very transformative kind of experience. And there are some other similar projects like collecting plastic for the oceans, preserving bee families and etc. And here on the next slide, actually, you can see how, they, how their model works. And by the way, they have found or funded a lot of projects so far. And here on the next slide, you can actually see the map of their presence. They are present actually almost all across the Europe. I think it's in 16 countries. And they have just entered the Canadian market, also an Indian one once. And by the way, at this point, you are also given that Montenegro is not yet part of, of it. Even I know that uh, she was she wanted to join actually in the past the, in, in the past the mission, but um, due to some restructuring of the cooperative at that time, actually the process was stopped and we will continue now. Running a business as a cooperative is very important because it is char characterized by collective ownership which means that everyone can become a part and an investor of it 
who want to be affected by it. And it's also char characterized by uh, democratic leadership. So everyone is included in the decision-making process, let it be hosts, um, scouts, ambassadors who are uh, setting the nodes in the region, and etc. So much about Airbnb. Now I would, like, I would like to talk about next initiative and experiment. We are actually intensively working right, right now on it. We have found out that many hosts who are not part of our platform that provides these scouts would also need operational day-to-day -day support in their, in their daily tasks. And having this in mind, we decided to take actually our scouting model to the next level by offering all this extensive knowledge that younger generations and students possess to the broader market. So not only to those who are part of the platform, but also to anyone else who need any kind of assistance. Well, of assistance. And <clears throat> we, have, we are actually right now experimenting, but we have built a database that we have already a pool of more than 40 uh, young talents, we call it like young talents database, who are available and waiting there for hosts in need. And actually drawn from our past case studies and also ongoing research that is happening alongside this um, experiment, we have found two key, yeah, actually important things. Operational day-to-day -day support should be co-financed or, or semi-subsidized so that those involved beneficiaries can afford it. Because we have found out that many of those respondents who are hesitating in opting for external assistance are mostly complaining about, about high prices, expensive services, because we need to understand that these uh, younger generation talents are charging for their uh, assistance on our, of course. And here is just one idea on what could be introduced, actually, some kind of voucher scheme, because I know how it worked in Slovenia during the pandemic, we have actually activated the voucher scheme, but the problem again, where the government was actually co-financing digital services for macro businesses, but again the problem, the problem was that those micro rural providers that I'm talking about were left out because of these uh, like, things that I was talking before. So we should kind of um, introduce a voucher scheme that is really sector specific. And then the second finding is that micro rural businesses find operational on the ground support much more efficient over manuals, guides and lengthy training. Actually, we have figured out, based on all these engagements we have we had with hosts, that they prefer operational on the ground face-to-face -face support over attending lectures or reading learning materials. And there is a common misconception in us, let's say, that our <coughs> managers in tourism and etc that we think that by only handing over like manuals, uh, manuals, learning materials and stuff, we will, make, we will make them adhere to those. But this is, maybe it sounds good in theory, but not in practice, because they are, the main problem is that they lack time. They don't have, they are not well established company that has, uh, that have these uh, separate departments for marketing, etc. Uh, they are not practicing this every day. Maybe they're excited at a point when they heard about very good use, use case or about the trends, but this uh, excitement really quickly wave off, actually. So these are two problems, let's say challenges, that needs to be taken into account. Now I would like to talk about another very interesting case study uh, from Slovenia. Actually, uh, that could like make rural areas much more attractive and that can retain tourists longer at destination and can increase demand in off-peak seasons, actually. And they came up, they, actually the married couple from my region, they have developed a brand new, actually, glamping style tent, pod or mobile home, however you call it. It's fully equipped, all the materials, materials are sourced locally, and they have even obtained a Green Key certificate. And they are actually running under the franchise model, which means that they are granting franchise to all those micro-rural stakeholders in rural areas who have an extra piece of land on their yard and would like to invest it. 
Actually, this company would like to build like a scattered clamping or a network of those mobile houses scattered all across the region, which which is quite brilliant idea, I would say, and it is gaining traction. Many many rural providers are interested in that and they're deciding. And what is also very important is, given that as you probably know, tourism is really capital intensive industry, which means that. All investments are pretty expensive. Such house costs around 30k, which is which hosts found quite affordable. And there is one other proposition of this model. They are getting actually they are um, removing this burden from uh, micro providers of, for promotion, for managing distribution channels and availabilities and etc. Because everything is taken care of by this franchise model. So they just need to set it up and wait for guests and take care of them, of course, in a way. And here on... Um, I, by the way, if I go back to the previous uh, slide, I really hope it, you find it interesting. If not, I would recommend to think about whether you can apply something similar when it comes to the model itself, franchise model, to some other areas. And uh, here I would like to talk briefly about uh, our last achievements, uh, our, our last achievement that happened actually two weeks ago. Our team, the same team as uh, participated to the Enter conference, we participated to the Hacks, uh, Hack Startup, Startup Village Hackathon that was organized by AgriFood Lithuania and was, was sponsored by European Commission. So it was organized quite at a high level. And we have participated to the track on how to make villages more attractive, more attractive to live, work, and innovate. And our idea, winning idea, actually, actually was on how to bring students, digital nomads, and younger and older generation in rural areas together, lock them down for a specific period, let's say one, two, three weeks, and make them work together closely and try to produce, I mean, make them working closely on different challenges that pervade these spaces and produce like solutions for that. And as I, I've heard actually, uh, Montenegro is also becoming very popular for digital nomads, so it could be like very useful approach for you too. I don't know about students, uh, you have, do you have a university here? Yeah, of course, that, that's perfect. And why students? Why we decided for students? Because I'm teaching assistants, I'm dealing with students every day, and I'm honestly really aware that the school system is not very good. Because we should include, we should more actively engage students and uh, provide them opportunities for hands-on learning. So working on real projects, and that is one way actually of doing it. But rather than me um, talking further about this, I would like to play out this winning pitch, if you don't mind. Hey, we are at the Institute of Kind of presenting to you our idea of living and learning back.
All these experiences allow us to understand problems our stakeholders are facing. Let's take a look. Many rural areas in Slovenia are facing dilemmas about their future existence due to the provoked economic changes of global scopes. Hence, rural economies facing the need for alternatives in overcoming and overcoming many conditions such as low production, brain drain, digital divide, and etc. All this has particularly eroded the vitality of villages and rural communities. We want to bring it back. By including students in our living learning labs, we mean to tackle problems faced by students today, such as the lack of hands-on learning experiences and mentorship availability, subdued creative thinking, rigid learning environment, and lack of involvement and network with students with different stakeholders. It's issues like this and more that lead people living in the rural areas to be inclined to quit education or training early, and as it is clearly seen in the visual representation on the graph uh, on the right side. We have seen a, a few examples in recent years that digital nomads are generating negative impact on the local housing market, where locals are being pushed out because of the skyrocketing prices. On the other hand, we have villages who are underpopulated. With our concept, we will disperse this tourism and real, real estate flows. Number one reason nomads return home is because of loneliness and social seclusion, lack of community. We will upgrade this by not just integrating them with the community of other digital nomads, but also with the local community and students, which benefits all the parties. By giving digital nomads an option to give back to the local communities, we will change this experience and make their work more meaningful. Our idea aims to show in practice how intelligent interconnection of different domains, stakeholders, interest groups, physically working together for a particular amount of time on various local challenges that can support young and old residents in rural areas by creating an attractive and vibrant living environment to drive transformations. We have chosen the village of Oishchitsa for our pilot project. One of our team members lives there and he is one of those proactive individuals who want to take the village dynamics to the next level. The village has available public spaces that will serve as a lab, while all the necessary technical equipment will be sponsored by our Studio Touristica Lab. Uh, the pilot project can become operational tomorrow. It's viable and feasible with a minimal initial investment. Estimated cost for its realization is 10,000 euros. The pilot project serves as our MVP. Our leading learning lab concept can be later applied to villages all over the European Union. Benefits for our stakeholders. Local businesses and organizations get creative, innovative and innovative ideas and operational support. Our students get hands-on learning experience and mentoring and networking. Digital nomads get to do meaningful work and share their knowledge with the local community. Our business is at its core a service. We provide municipalities with our expertise, a network of students and remote workers, our brand, marketing activities and organization and facilitation. Our main customers are local municipalities who would like to revitalize their rural areas and drive change. They can fund us from their local budgets or we can join forces and apply together for a different funding opportunities like EU, EU grants, national tenders, Erasmus, etc. If this pilot proves successful, we would like to scale up with a platform that would allow us to run multiple living and learning labs around the world. We are not saving the world, we are setting the perfect ground concept for gradual transitions to a smarter and more attractive and workable villages. Thank you. Uh, this is actually all from my side. As you, as you have seen, we have named this um, activity actually a Living Learning Lab. Uh, I really hope that you, uh, I have given you some other perspective on, on, on development of rural regions, even though there are many more, there is kind of many more of them, but these are those that I'm mostly involved in. And yes, thank you.